been getting a lot of requests to show exactly how I made my little spear. This is the same one that you saw me using in that video where I was spearing crawfish. Um, there's a million videos on YouTube on how to make these spears, but I'll show you how I made mine. And I'll also explain a little bit about how they work. So, if you stick with me here, I'll show you how to do this. All that right there is purslane. This is one of my favorite wild edibles. It's just growing in my neighbor's yard here. And uh, it's one of the most tasty things. Delicious. Tastes like almost like bean sprouts and a little bit of lemon. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. As I eat this, um, here are my spears. And uh, no, bamboo does not grow where I live, but it does grow at the hobby store. And you may be familiar with this where it's split into four sections and just a little plug right here to uh, keep them apart and then uh, a bit of a wrapping here to keep it from splitting any further. And then the tips are sharpened up real nice. And then next to it is the, uh, this is the spear that I used in my crayfish video. And here is a much larger version of that, you know, a heavier pole and longer metal tines. And then right next to it, this is the real deal. This is a commercial heavy duty spear fishing pole. This is made for big fish. I'm talking blue water ocean fishing where they're using these spear poles to kill fish upwards of 30, 40, 50 pounds. So if it works for them, there's something about that particular design. Um, now the question is, is why, why three points? You know, why do it this way? Well, there's a couple of reasons in my opinion. If you've ever tried to spear a trout or a fish, which I have, using just a sharpened piece of stick, you'll very quickly realize that, you know, fish, that slime on them makes it very, very hard to get that point to stick into the fish at all. When you have three points like this, it doesn't necessarily matter if you puncture the fish. All you gotta do is get part of them between these points. So imagine this is, you know, a fish flesh. And I'm gonna take this spear, I'm gonna hit this fish and push it right through. There we go. Can you see how that meat, essentially, between the tines? gets pinned and held in place. And that's how these three-pronged fish spears work. So, one, it increases your chances of actually puncturing the fish and actually hitting it, especially if these are good and sharp. But two, instead of just a single point where if it goes through the fish, it can wiggle off unless you have a barb of some sort latched on there, this actually pins the animal between the tines. So I can shoot a big fish and it'll hold it because it just grabs onto that meat you know, that's in between here and, and, and pins that fish in place. Or I can go and shoot this at small fish, even fish that are too small to really puncture with this. As long as I get them wedged between these between these tines, I can pick them up. Think about it when you're, if you ever try to make a primitive version of it. Let me grab the, the bamboo one and I'll show you what I mean. When I made this bamboo spear pole, I was just beginning to experiment. I'm still quite proud of it and I put it on my wall because it's pretty. But check out the difference in the, the space between the tines. This, again, is a commercially produced professional spear pole designed for blue water fishing in the ocean for big, heavy fish. This, you know, I made out of bamboo, but look at the size that I have between, between these tines. And, you know, I could get, you know, my hand down in there and it pinches it somewhat, but nowhere near as efficiently as this does. And so, I'd imagine that this might work, but think about the size of the fish that you're going for. If you're going for a piranha, or a trout or you know some small little pamphlet say like a piranha <laughs> say a, a crappie or something like that a little bit more realistic and if i try to hit him with these tines good job i might get lucky and get him stuck on one but then i'm missing out on that whole ability to pinch in between here because even at the very base that's almost as wide as his body you know for some of these smaller panfish and so if i were to redo this i would try to get those tines to be a little bit closer together like so if you go out and make your own and it's big and wide like this, um, I think it might not work as well as you hope. I would, I would say that if you, if you keep them closer together, like this metal one, you'll have a better chance of catching fish. So uh, let's continue. Okay, I want to show you the components of the spear pole before we actually build one. Here of course we have the three tines that we just discussed. I actually made these out of... Uh, just some wire I found in the garage. You can make them out of uh, hanger wire. That works really well for these lighter ones. And so these are inserted in the end of the pole. And I have them tied and glued in there. And then I have a wrap 
of uh, artificial sinew here to make sure that this doesn't split whenever it hits stuff. Of course, you know, here's a bamboo pole that's been nice and straightened. And this little accessory right here is a bit of surgical tubing and some paracord. So that if you're going for frogs or if you're going for fish or whatever, it allows you to move that spear pole a lot faster than you can with your bare hand. The items that you're going to need for this project is, well, you need some gloves, safety first, and sticks, or straight limbs, you know, poles basically. And these are bamboo, again, I picked them up over at the, uh, the hobby shop, but any sort of straight uh, bit of wood, um, as long as you are, and about as big around as your finger, will do just fine. And of course, you know, once we have these, they're not straight at all, so we need a means of making heat so that we can straighten these to make a, a proper spear, so <laughs> it's amazing. I just happen to have one of these emberlet stoves lying around, so I'll, I'll use that. And now, for the tines, we need some wire. Now this was part of those political signs that somebody put in my yard. At least there was something useful that came of it. So I'm going to cut these off for the, for the tines and sharpen them up. Got some wire snips. If we have to, we got an angle grinder. And then to haft it all to the, uh, to the spear pole, we got some, uh, some artificial sinew and some glue. So let's get started. I'm going to cut these for some nice tines. Gosh, where do they make these things out of? Okay, plan B. Let's go get the angle grinder. Nice and pointy. Check that out. And again, not terribly necessary, but I did uh, put little notches along the base so that the glue, when I haft them, will uh, have something to hold on to. But uh, there you go, there's your tines. Okay, the next job we gotta do is we have to take these sticks and we have to straighten them. Can you see how warped and bent that is? And uh, I'm using an emberlet here, but the whole idea is, and again, this works with any type of wood, is you know, I'm going to start joint by joint. I like to start on the thin end. I'm going to get rid of that curve. So the first thing I got to do, so I just got to get that part of this uh, bamboo nice and hot. I don't want to burn it. I don't want to scorch it, but I want to get it warm so it becomes pliable. It takes on kind of a glossy, uh, shiny look to it. It's almost like when you steam a vegetable, how it gets a little bit more a little bit darker in color, a little bit shiny. So, and you'll know it's ready because if you bend it, it stays that way. One benefit of having a gut. <laughs> it actually helps. To it's not too bad. Check it out. Just a few seconds. And the end of it there is a lot of the curve is taken out of it. Now I gotta work on this section right here. And uh, we'll get back to you when this thing's good and straight. Well, we just about have this one done. Swapped out the wood on the stove because it was a little bit wet without in the rain all day. But just a little bit of a little bit of bend. And it's not gonna be perfect, but check it out. I would say that is a lot straighter than when I started. Don't you agree? So now that we have this thing just about ready, it's as straight as we need it to be. Uh, it's time to get it ready to put the, the spikes in. Okay, now we got the final part of putting in the spikes uh, with a little bit of lashing and a little bit of glue. Now, I have seen videos of Australian Aboriginals that what they did is they, they had a solid piece of wood, not bamboo, and they would heat this up in the fire, the, the, the metal, and then they would just burn it into the end of the stick. And then they would wrap it with wire and maybe even use pitch or, or um, uh, epoxy type adhesive. You notice they're going way too far. So I'm going to cut this bamboo or this, this stuff right about, well, about here. 
so that I have enough material to support the spikes, but not so much that they're too short to be useful. Enough, uh, enough room to really keep that in there. Yeah, that'll work fine. I mean, this is a really big space. Um, I might have, uh, you know, overcompensated to make sure that that would fit, but we'll make it work. One of the things that I like doing is uh, lashing the the spikes together first before I before I put them inside the pole and what that does is I can lash them in such a way that they have a little bit of a wedge you know the stream becomes a wedge between the two and keeps them separated so there we go so you can see here and so you can see I'm going to take up the the excess space and then what I'll do is I'll start working some of this string between the points to get it to start to spread out. And this is why the I, I like the glue afterwards, because it covers up all the sloppy knot tying and, and everything else and it really solidifies it in there so that's uh, that's all we need so you see how it's all bundled up you see how the spikes are about the right distance apart make sure it still fits fits in pretty snug and the uh, thing about this particular glue it's Gorilla Glue it expands to um, four times oops, its original size mess there but I'll take care of that. So poly yeah, it's a uh, it's like a it turns into like a foam which is really nice because it fills in all the cracks fills in you know any other spots that might be missing so that is see and I'll spread these out you know, to how however far I need them to be and just add a little bit of a bit more And this is really important to lash because when you hit something, that force will drive those tines down inside of the bamboo or your stick and there's a good chance it'll split. So you don't want that to happen. So I make a little loop just so I can do a hidden type knot. And uh, again, this is just to reinforce this part of the, the spear. Just take the loose end, stick it through here. Got this end, and pull. And pulls that loose end right underneath there. Pull them both so that's not going anywhere. And uh, just trim it. So that's really good. Now, like I said, this Gorilla Glue, it uh, it'll foam up here, and it will fill in every little gap. In fact, it'll probably just bubble out the top of here and I'll have to trim it up later. But it's completely waterproof and uh, there you have it. I mean, got a nice straight spear pole. You've got the uh, tines a good distance away from one another. You've got that, that good spacing. You know, a piece of bamboo or stick or whatever and make these in no time. So they're fun, they're quick, and they're cheap. Um, and uh, I'll uh, show you here just really, really quickly how to make the elastic. Actually, I'll just point out how the elastic is made uh, so that you can use it as a Hawaiian spear. To make the elastic, all you have to do is get yourself some surgical tubing from the hardware store and some uh, paracord. So then I just tied a knot in the end of the paracord on each end, put it inside the uh, surgical tubing, and then I just put a, a bit of string. I just tied it up right there. Or you can use a uh, zip tie. Whatever you got, that's the, that's the totality of it. And then to attach it to the pole, 
just make a lark's head and fit it over the top like so pull it tight another option you can have is just to drill a hole and feed it through but uh, that works just fine and then to use it all i do is i grip it like so i don't use my thumb i just use the, the base of my hand and then i pull this thing up as far as i can get and then just pull onto it when i'm ready to fire I find whatever it is i want to stick I aim and I just let go. Let's kill that dandelion. And that's it. Uh, next time I'll show you something even cooler. Yeah, you know, here's my little Woomera. And uh, with this and this big spear pole, you know, even if it's a big carp that I'm after, it doesn't matter. It's dead. <laughs> Remember, when hunting, you have to know your species, and while this one may not be an exclusively aquatic species, it still can be quite the hunt. Getting close is often a very difficult thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.